Welcome back to our study of the book of Revelation. We have done the introduction, and now we turn our attention to chapter 1. I try to put some uh, phrases or verses from Revelation uh, as we begin new chapters. And so here's a quote uh, that says, To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And we'll be reading that verse in a few minutes. Our outline that we are following uh, is a sevenfold outline. The seven churches, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven signs, seven plagues, seven dooms, and seven new things. And those are the chapters that are involved with that. We are in chapters one, two, and three, of course. And the main driver of these three chapters are the seven churches that we find in two and three. And so uh, I try to outline this, and uh, a big letter A is there's a command. Uh, John is on the Isle of Patmos. He's going to be told to do some things. And there in chapter one, while it does not tell us about the seven churches, it is the greeting to the churches. The revelation, and keep in mind, that's capitalized. Um, maybe I could add the emphasis that's in the Greek. It is the revelation. It's a one of a kind. And it is big. Now, revelation itself means an unveiling of something previously not known. And so what we're about to read has not really been known up until this time. And it is of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him. And why did he give it to him? You, we're going to see that in a later chapter. Uh, but I can tell you now it's because he died for the sins of the world. And it continues on here to show unto his servants. Uh, and those are bond slaves. Those are people... Those are yous and me's that willingly want to serve the Lord and turn to him and follow Jesus without pay, um, often regardless of what the outcome's going to be. We, we just walk with God. We turn to him. And uh, that is the word here. A bond servant was someone who was freed, bought their freedom, but willingly because their master was so wonderful to him, turned around and said, I would like to, I'd like to stay with you. And so they willingly do that. To show unto servants things which must shortly, and while not unlined, underlined, the word shortly here means speedily. It denotes rapid something is rapidly going to come to pass. So, I mean, look at our culture today. Look how fast it is moving. We cannot keep up with the technology. Time is flying. And in the Lord's eyes and on the Lord's time schedule, it time's moving. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the revelation of Jesus Christ is coming and is being given for John to write down. And an angel is, the Greek is angelos, means messenger. And so this, mes this message is delivered by John, uh, to John by an angel, by a messenger. So the, mes the message comes through the heavenly messenger. Continuing, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw, right? So this is what John is saying. Now, I put another reference in here, and let's go back to the book of John that he wrote. And here's three verses that go right along with this. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Keep in mind, not only in the writing that John made, the Gospel of John, and in 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, John is still a bearer of light and a witness of Jesus Christ and who he is, the light of the world. So these all tie in together. What's in, what's in one Gospel is not exclusive and 
cannot be true in the life or in the story, the overall picture in another work of God, another book of the Lord. So all these tie together. All right, here's verse 3. Blessed or happy is he that reads. Um, this actually is talking about public readers. This would be the pastor getting up and reading out loud uh, this prophecy. It might be somebody in John's day that takes takes the scroll and rolls and stands in the public marketplace and reads it. He says, Blessed are they that read this, read out loud, and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Keep in mind, remember speedily in the previous verse, the time is at hand. And the word time right here is not chronos, which is a clock time, two o'clock, six o'clock, like on those clocks I have, but keros, which means a fixed season. So it's not talking about an hour or a minute or a second. It's talking about where the signs of the times, it's like a season changes. And we just sense it changing. It just doesn't chime, but it's growing towards that. So there's a threefold blessing to studying the book for you and me and everyone else. There's a blessing for readers. There's a blessing for hearers. And there's a blessing for keepers. Now, there are seven Beatitudes of the book of Revelation. Most people do not know that, and they're pulled out from the entire book. But I put this in here because there's a lot of sevens in the book of Revelation, and I wanted to share that as many of these as I can with you. And there's a bunch of them right here. And so we just looked at the first one, and they are in uh, chronological order as they show up in the in the chapters as we go ahead. So there's a blessing to those that read and to hear and keep it. And there's a blessing uh, for those that die in the Lord. There, peop there is a blessing for people that watch for the Lord to come. It's a real blessing to those that are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And there are those, there's a blessing to them that, that go up into the rap with the rapture. Uh, the blessing for those that keep or guard the sayings of God's word. And there's a blessing for those that are obedient to it. Back to the verses, John 4, or yeah, chapter uh, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. The seven churches, seven's the number of God. We're go, we know those are churches. The seven spirits, we see what they are in Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2 for the list of these. I call your attention, though, to he who is, um, or underlined him who is, he who is. That is Yahweh. That is Greek for Yahweh. Uh, denoting God. Going on, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, that's a legal witness before the throne, and the first begotten of the dead. Uh, Jesus rose from the dead, and he didn't have to die again. Anybody else that rose from the dead, the, even the people that Jesus brought back to like, like Lazarus, they all died again, but not Christ. And the prince of the kings, or the ruler of the kings of the earth, Jesus is the true ruler unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Wow, this is really terrific. And the word wash us, or that phrase means he's freed us from our sins in his own blood. So look, look how wonderful the Lord is. Look how powerful, look how incredible Jesus Christ is. And uh, look at the names for him in just these verses. And has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And here it denotes, I agree with that. I say amen to that, of who Jesus is and what he is, has done, what he's doing now, and what he ultimately will do. All right. Take a deep breath because that's 
that's sort of the introduction. All right, take a deep breath as we we continue on, but it's like it's a new paragraph. Behold, or a better word to use here is look, and you're excited about it. Um, look, he comes with clouds, and the word clouds here is not the ordinary ones, but it's the, the, the clouds that are around the throne of God. And so when he does return, he's coming in the clouds of the throne, He's coming in glory clouds, not earthly ones. And they also, which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail. Uh, they will smite their chest. They'll beat their chest because of him. Even so, and here's another, amen. We agree with that. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. All right, here's uh, Isaiah 9, 6 now. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. All these things are Jesus, and we just got a reminder of him. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, anytime you come across the word tribulation in the Bible, um, it can be translated tribulation. It is and should be. It, it means trouble or it means actually pressure. Like you just feel like you're getting, you just, there's nowhere to go. The walls are moving in, the ceiling's dropping. And you, it's like there's just nowhere to go. You just feel pressure and constant. And so that's what tribulation is. Now, when it talks about, it's talking about those kind of things in life. But when we talk about the great tribulation in the book of Revelation, that's capitalized and that is ultimate. That is just outright death and, and, and suffering and uh, famine or war everywhere. It's just total chaos and destruction. And that's the pressure and the trouble, the tribulation that's going to happen then. Patmos, what about that, that isle? It's called the Isle of Patmos. And it's a small rocky island about 16 miles uh, in the Aegean Sea. Um, it's some 40 miles southwest of Miletus. And it was a prison colony which Rome established. Greece owns it today. It's in Greek, in Greece. So it was a place where they, they, the Romans mined iron ore, and their prisoners were to do that. Uh, the iron ore was for their arsenal, for their weapons of war, for their big things, and for the small things of swords. So here's a, here's a picture in the air of Patmos. You can see the population center is very dense on the very sort of the biggest, the next biggest one on the bottom, all the white area, and then it goes down to the sea. And then just look how, look how it spreads out through uh, the arteries of the mountains, within the mountains, around the islands. Seacoast is very populated. There's an old fort. And then build up around it's just apartments. This is something I did for fun. That does not really exist over there, but I uh, did something with my class with fritters. Can you, you sort of figure it out now? Phrase fritters. So we uh, I had a friend design this. And uh, here's looking out into the Aegean Sea, little cove. Told my class this is where John lived. And, uh, of course, that's not true. He did not have a, a great life on the aisle, but he, his needs were taken care of. So here's, here's, uh, here's time for a joke. What do you call a nerd that lives on the Isle of Patmos? A Greek geek. Okay, enough of that, and I won't bother you anymore with any of them. Okay, we need to move on and keep going here. All right, John says this, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, Sunday, 
and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Trumpet in the Bible was, was used for getting people up like in the morning. And that When our trumpet sounds, that's our resurrection. And it also was used for uh, as, assemble, call everybody together. That would be the rapture. And the trumpet mentioned here is a shofar. It's not what's in the Boston Pops Orchestra. And so what is being said? Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what you see, write in a book. And sit in unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Smyrna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatira, unto Sardis, unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And there they are in that order. Today that is present Turkey. Many of those cities exist. The ruins they on most of them they are have dug uh, are digging up have dug up, and we'll look at some of that a little later on. But these are the seven churches that are to be written to. And I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now these are the churches, and that's told us in verse twenty. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the breast or chest with a golden belt. Okay, this is an overall description of someone who definitely is in charge. It's, a, it's priest attire, and Jesus is the high priest. The golden belt always signified authority, and he is the ultimate authority. Here's a couple of pictures, just artist concept. I, I appreciate good art. Although that is not him. And that's not necessarily where, how the candlesticks will be. Here's just a graphic picture of the seven churches and the candlesticks with Christ in the middle. Note the sword coming out of his eyes. And we're going to see five things about Jesus here that, that highlight this section. His head and his hairs were one white like wool as white as snow. So, first of all, he's pure. He's just. He is righteous. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. That's judgment. And he is coming to earth to judge the earth. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Jesus has been tried walking this earth he lived, he, he had a trial of fire in that the, he went to the cross, he died for the sins of the world, and he was the pure Lamb of God. But brass signifies you're tried, you're put to the test. Uh, that can go all the way from his temptations, all the way to him going back to heaven. And his voice is the sound of many waters. Now, some said that should be scary of a lot of waves hitting, a lot of waters running. And that very well could be loud, but I'm thinking that he, I'm thinking that this very well may be the aspect of, of the Lord that he leads us beside still waters. Because uh, God's people learn to trust him. Um, but keep in mind, it does say the sound. Still waters do not make noise, but the sound of many waters. So this is, he's, he's coming quickly. He's coming quickly. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. It's, it's the broad, it's the big Roman sword for major battle, to kill a lot, just to sweep around in a circle Major judgment is coming. And lastly, his countenance was as the sun shines in his strength. He is the Son of God. Once again, a diagram. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. Actually, he's saying, Stop being afraid. I am the first and the last. I'm he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys, once again, authority of hell and of death. Backing up to the phrase forevermore, 
it actually says, I am alive unto the, from age to age, unto the ages and the ages and the ages, and he's eternal. So he's talking about, write the things which you have seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. And so a very, very easy outline of the book is to follow the command of the Lord right here. He says, write about things in the past. It's chapter 1. Write about things which are. That's the church age, chapters 2 and 3. And write about things in the future. It's chapters 4 through 22. Wow. The mystery of the seven stars which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels, actually messengers. So these will be pastors of the seven churches. And the seven candlesticks which you saw are those seven churches. So this is where we're at. We're at the precipice now looking at these seven churches and the message that the Lord has to each one of them. And every one of them has, has an application to today and a message for our churches today. And so our lesson fly away is number one, Jesus will return quickly. It's fast, it's speedy. Remember, read, heed, Heed and keep the word of God. That's a command that we're to do. And there is great power in three things. The church, people, the pastor of that church, and ultimately, Jesus Christ. My bibliography grows uh, from the introduction to this, and it probably will grow a little bit more as we go through this. May God bless you. I want to thank you. If I can help you in any way, these lessons are taught live to a Bible class and have been several times. Uh, if you would like a Word document of this chapter one, I'll be glad to send it to you or any of the chapters that you would listen to. I will not keep your email. Father, we want to thank you for this great book. And uh, so many want to know the future. Uh, Lord, we need to learn the past, and we need to learn the present, and what you think and what you're doing in our lives. And then, Lord, we can look to our hope, Lord Jesus Christ. So we, we can look three ways. We're told to look three ways, past, present, future. But we know, Lord, our ultimate victories are in our Savior, who is coming soon for us. In Jesus' name we praise and thank you. Amen.